my fellow gamers, welcome, welcome back to the game here. And technically, I can't say welcome back. Because after two years, a live downturn, life upturn, and a sudden release on Steam that I didn't realize until a month later, we can finally do a game that I started two years ago and finish. The original play was 100% this. I don't know if I'm going to 100% it or not. But we'll get to that as we get through it. I will say this game is a prequel and a sequel at the same time because that's what Sada does. So I would recommend looking at Deadly Prediction 1, finishing it, or watch my let's play of it because there's a lot to take in with this game, and especially if you're going to understand how the main character works. Because you have no idea what you're thinking until you actually start talking with him. So with that said, let's go ahead and jump into the game. I've been excited to actually cover Like I said, I've started it. You may have seen it two years ago. But we're ready to actually do it this time. That was like a front frozen time. My first thought is, how the freak do you get a body to do that perfectly in a block of ice? That is legitimately my question. But seriously, Chainsaw Ice, FBI, they're going to love it here. That's all that matters. 88 hours. That's all the specific amount of time in Boston. Everybody been to Thompsonville? Because I haven't. God damn it. What a way to start the new year. At this rate, I'll be dead by Easter. Quiet down, Agent Jones. You're on the clock. <sighs> Quiet down? Ha! <laughs> you, you have any idea what you've done? No, nope. I'd be half naked in Havana right now if you hadn't shown up. Soaking up some rays, surrounded by a harem of bikini queens, a mojito in one hand, and a seafood slathered Havana style pizza in the other. What did I do to deserve this? Does God hate me? No. The regional bureau chief merely issued a special order. <laughs> oh. Yeah. How could I forget? A special order to rob me of my well-deserved vacation. You want pizza? I'll buy you some pizza. You can find that junk anywhere. Whoa! Hey! Hold on a minute. What did you just say? Pizza is not junk. Pizza is a sacred food bestowed upon us by God himself. You need to apologize right now. This is sheer blasphemy. Apologize to who? Pizza or God? Ha <laughs> ha! You think you're so clever. Maybe if you'd eaten pizza this morning like a decent person, you wouldn't have cut your finger. I only cut my finger because I couldn't find a left-handed can opener at the hotel. Normally, I would never make such an amateur mistake. Oh, really? Well, if you want me to get into gear, then just feed me some pizza, okay? We must act unfaithfully and abandon our ideals again and again. We cannot advance from one period of life into another without causing these pains of treachery. <sighs> Nietzsche, again, please spare me before my ears start to bleed. Ever since the moment you got here, it's been nothing but Nietzsche quotes. The worst enemy you can meet will always be yourself. Yes. I said knock it off. I prefer pizza to philosophy. <laughs> Want me to dial the number for you? 
Come on, Agent Jones. It's time to get serious. Your four and a half years of hard work are finally about to pay off, and all you're focused on is this nonsense? Pizza isn't nonsense. Quiet. As you wish, Mother. My lips are sealed. Happy now. Okay, so first of all, I gotta ask, how the freak are you gonna get to Havana? Havana's still blockaded, so you can't go there. B, she's got a point. He's got a point, pizza isn't junk. And C, apologize, I guess both? Anyway. Agent Jones, don't let him take control of the conversation. The moment you let your guard down, he'll strike. And no red, remember? It's open. Come on in. You have questions for us. That's why you're here, isn't it? There he is, the man, the myth, the legend. He didn't age well. That's quite a quick one. Well, let's get on with it. Oh, I gotta make sure I hang my coat up because that's important. Before I start talking to. You know. Francis Zach Morgan. I'm glad they retained the original voice actor that for him. Makes things a little bit better. Mr. Morgan, before we question you, allow me to first read you your rights. Anything you say may be used against you in a court of law. Please keep that in mind as you speak. Do we have permission to film this? Hmm? Don't worry, my fairy. They're free to do whatever they like. Something wrong, Mr. Morgan? <clears throat> I'm FBI Special Agent Aaliyah Davis, and this is... Simon Jones. An analyst from the Boston branch. He's been monitoring us for years now. Oh, uh, hi. Pizza Boy Jones. Seriously. <laughs> a southern belle and a lonesome loser who can't catch a break. Quite the uncanny duo. You'd be the perfect stars for the latest video game. Fourth wall break. Isn't that right, my fairy? <laughs> How many years has it been since someone came to chat with us? Oh, but don't ask me about my fairy. That's a private matter. 
It's hard to tell what he's thinking, but my eyes can't be deceived. Yeah. If he's hiding something, it'll come out in his face. You haven't met him, have you? So let's go to the Dologist Morgan. Excuse me, Mr. Morgan, but would you please refrain from consuming that while we speak? I'm talking about... Yes, that. You don't need to worry about us. Don't get in our way, and we won't get in yours. Unfortunately, questioning doesn't work like that. Our data needs to be consistent. Now please, put out that stinking indulgence right this minute. What? <laughs> if we say no... Then I'll put it out myself. Using force. Whoa, whoa, Aaliyah! This is Morgan's house. Besides, it's legal in Massachusetts for individuals to consume cannabis in the comfort of their own homes. And I mean, come on. It's medicinal. Exactly. Wait. Who said are you on? Yeah. Uh. Francis Zach Morgan. He was once an FBI special agent, an extremely talented one. At least that's what they tell me. Perhaps he was a little too talented. You solved many difficult cases across your career, utilizing your own unique MO. Method operation, or. Like that. You've expertly cracked cases that were otherwise thought to be unsolvable. According to our records, after joining the FBI in 2002, you quickly solved two drug ring-related kidnapping cases. In 2003, you solved the Inside Out Flesh Skinner case in the suburbs of Pittsburgh. In 2004, the Jeffrey Dahmer wannabe case in Milwaukee. And also the stuffed human collector case in St. Louis that very same year. Then, in 2005, you coincidentally happened to solve the Lee Clarkson murder case while on vacation. You went on to solve many other cases after that, all of them seemingly inexplicable. Did you really solve these cases all on your own? There are no records of you using a wide-scale investigative team or working with anyone else. How did you ever accomplish such monumental feats all by yourself? It was all thanks to our talented partner. Partner. The FBI files show no record of you ever working with a partner. Do you mean you worked with some sort of unofficial partner? Or an outside confidant? Our partner is our partner. We've always worked together. Besides, Belle, you're forgetting one important thing. After the St. Louis case, we stopped by a diner on our way home and caught Thelma and Louise, two highly sought-after fugitives. <laughs> It ain't doing anything for you. Hey, Belle. Why are you dressed so handsomely? What are you talking about? The thick black accessory wrapped around your neck. That's a male necktie. The color black represents confidence and interest in the self. And... Your decision to wear a male tie symbolizes your declaration of war against a predominantly male society. Or perhaps it's a psychological barrier meant to hide the weakness that dwells deep within your psyche. We admire your bravery. I thought you retired from profiling. <laughs> Bullseye, huh? Wrecked. 
You're an easy one to read. In order to think with society, a man must first gouge out his eyes and cut off his ears. More N-I-E-T-C-H-C-H-E. Don't judge a book by its cover. For someone who's supposed to have been one of our best, you've got an awful eye for people. Or did all that smoke and kill all your little gray cells? That's not very nice. Okay, Aaliyah, that's enough. She's smart, but she's also more of a shrew than she lets on. Agent Jones, that's sexual harassment. No, that's not. At least it's a way... Is it harassment? Maybe. I didn't see anything sexual in that at all, but okay. <laughs> so, Belle, does that barrier of yours also protect you from violent criminals <laughs> he's more dangerous than I thought I can't read him I'll just have to assault him head on with questions then first I'll try using the files on the table to shake him up Ooh, the chess game that chessboard looks rather old and you can't even buy those ivory pieces anymore right they were banned by the sites treaty that was made in France in the 1900s. We know it's in bad taste, but the weight of the ivory just feels so good in our hands. You play chess alone? Is that a crime? No, but it's a hard game to enjoy when you're all by yourself. He's probably just replicating famous games. Or trying to solve problems from a chess workbook. Right, Morgan? I may not look it, but I'm actually a bit of a chestnut myself. When I was in school, I used to pour over every issue of Chess Life, the magazine published by the U.S. Chess Federation. This is irrelevant! Well, unfortunately your guess is completely wrong, Agent Jones. He isn't replicating a famous game, nor is he solving workbook problems. There isn't a single chess book to be found in this apartment. And I didn't find any chess-related websites in his internet history. He was simply playing chess. All alone. So... What's wrong with that, Belle? I don't understand it. How could a single human being seriously play as both sides? You just publicly confessed to stealing personal data. That she did. Seems like that's a much bigger problem. Oh no. Everything was done in a perfectly legal manner. We simply happened to intercept a handful of data being sent out from an unknown origin. No, that's illegal. Ooh, now she's really trying to scare us. Did you hear that, my fairy? Serious nightmare fuel. Mr. Morgan, may I ask you a question purely out of curiosity? If it makes you uncomfortable, just let me know, and I'll retract it. Belle, what's wrong? You sure put a lot of effort into that approach. It's a question about death. About this body? Are you afraid of what's coming? Think carefully about why we're smoking this, then ask us again. Honestly, we're not afraid. Rather, we find it intriguing. Intriguing? Yes. <sighs> Belle, have you ever been to the Grand Canyon in winter? What? No. In the dead of winter, the Grand Canyon is terribly cold. No. Colder than you could imagine. A cold that no photograph could ever express. The sun. <laughs> Powerless. And the temperature drops below zero. Has it ever done that? Probably not in a long time. Now I'm curious. Right in the middle of the day. Meaning? <laughs> Meaning. You can't 
really understand something until you experience it for yourself. If you want to learn more about us, you need to gain more experience. The coldest temperature in the Grand Canyon is negative 22 degrees Fahrenheit, February 1st, 1985. How? What? Okay, I see what you're saying, Zach. Well. Cool. Alright, let's get over this. The case. Do you remember the homicides that took place in Lucare, Louisiana in 2005? We solved that case. Your report states the following. By coincidence, you encountered a serious incident in a town you visited while on vacation. You then decided to steal the right to investigate from the local law enforcement and took over the case. After several more homicides, you managed to apprehend the perpetrator. Yes. Yes. Yes, that's exactly what happened. <laughs> we stole the right to investigate from them. Just as you said. It all started when the body of a 16-year-old girl was discovered. You arrived in Lucare immediately after that, didn't you? We just can't seem to keep ourselves away from dead girls. Did you really visit that town just to take a vacation? We don't know. If you already have the report, then we suggest you read it, Belle. Either way, that case is closed. Closed? You sure about that? Don't you think this puzzle is still missing some crucial pieces? <laughs> Come on. No need to beat around the bush with us, Belle. They found Lise Clarkson's body. It was hidden deep within the Clarkson Food Delivery Service's cold storage warehouse. After 14 years, we finally discovered the body of the very first victim. Do you know what this means? That's why we're here. The first victim in the case he solved, Lise Clarkson. Okay, pause. 16 year old girl gets murdered. Well, they found the body. The first victim in the case just been found. How did they know this? This is a photograph of what she looks like now. How will he react when he sees it? We're pleased that her body turned up. Deeply pleased. You claim to have closed this case, but now a lost body suddenly surfaced. Aren't you curious about the details? Body or not, we already solved that case. Lisa's body can't change anything now. And it certainly has nothing to do with us. I suspect the body was stored there rather than abandoned, due to the unnatural state it was found in. She was found frozen in a storage unit. Therefore, she looks exactly the same as she did when she disappeared. In fact, She's in such good condition that we can even determine the murder weapon and cause of death. Well, good for you. <laughs> even stranger is how unbelievably beautiful she looks. That's creepy, irrelevant, and why? At first glance, few would guess she was a murder victim at all. But her body's torn in pieces? That's what I understand? She looks more like a piece of art. Or a mythological figure from a painting. Oh, that's why they're doing this. This keeps getting better and better. Better and better? Isn't that right, my fairy? That's why it's relevant. Again, first game. <laughs> a corpse as beautiful as a goddess. Sounds just like our story. Hmm. <laughs> yes. That went okay. Now I'm sure that Morgan's hiding something. I may be able to get what I want if we go deeper into the documents. Uh, in the case files. Isn't there someone else you should have talked to before coming to us? Such as 
We were unable to reach Patricia Clarkson. You look surprised. I thought you already knew. After all, you visited Louisiana last week. We assumed you met with her during your time there. Oh? We haven't been to Louisiana. Not in 14 years. Is that so? We've been right here in our apartment this entire time. That man is our witness, aren't you, Simon? <laughs> He's right. Wait, what? He didn't even take a single step outside on Christmas Eve. Which means that I didn't get to either. Are you positive about that? Uh, buddy! I took the liberty of checking some airline records. Last Friday, the name Billy Bishop was listed on a morning flight out of Boston. This is the fake name you used to use as an agent, isn't it? <laughs> a mere coincidence. Yet that's not all. That evening on the same day, a man with a large scar on his forehead allegedly purchased an 89 Cadillac from a small used car lot in Lucare. How the heck is there an 89 Cadillac in a used car lot? And what is that, 2018 is what this game takes place in? Or even then, still. He reportedly said he wanted something old, big, and strong. The owner of the car lot felt it was a strange order, so it stuck in his mind. Our world is filled with mysteries. And they always have the most bizarre timing. D Incidentally, on the following day, an identical Cadillac was taken to a scrapyard in Trenton. Trenton, New Jersey. You can find that type of car anywhere. I don't think so. Isn't that right, my fairy? Okay, that one I don't get. <laughs> Who is it? This my fairy character you keep speaking to. Uh-oh. You can't see her? Such bad manners. You barge into our apartment, yet you don't even care about who else is living here. Dissociative Identity Disorder. In the past, it was known as Multiple Personality Disorder. You were subjected to an internal probe only once during your career, correct? They suspected that you had DID, but you denied it. And no problems arose during your test. Is this how you dealt with the psychological profiler back then, too? Yeah, that makes sense. Saying strange things, weaving unrelated matters together. Is that how you slipped through? You're free to draw your own conclusions, Belle. But my fairy clearly exists. She's been sitting right there, on your lap this entire time. <laughs> hey, stop it. Uh, no violence allowed in here, Belle. Wouldn't want to scare my fairy, now would we? Alright. You may be wondering why we decided to unearth all these old files. Yeah, I... Everything I... happens for a reason. Then that's why it happens. I freaking hate that quote saying. The moment Lise Clarkson's body was found, we did the best we could to start our own local investigation. But there wasn't much we could actually investigate due to the damage caused by the hurricane. Then we assume you also questioned everyone who worked in the warehouse. Of course. We questioned all the Clarkson Food Delivery Services employees who staffed the warehouse and its owner, but we still have yet to obtain any key testimonies. Par for the course with a 14-year-old case, if you ask me. He's got a point. Mm. Not to mention how bad the timing was. Most of the employees were on vacation. So, you gave up on the investigation and came to see us instead. <laughs> Remember what happened, my fairy? Maybe. That warehouse, that man, so incoherent, such a pain. Hey, are you talking about the guy who managed the vault where Lisa's body was found? 
Yeah, I think he started working there in 2005. Remember, Aaliyah? You said he was a pain to deal with, too. Uh oh. A large man, yes. Hm. No need to answer. If you don't want to, I'm sure you've already put him under surveillance. Textbook FBI protocol. Morgan's right. Everything happens for a reason. That's why it happened. Even this messy room. There must be a reason for it. Especially when it comes to those strangely tidy spots. They're practically begging me to question them. Uh, we'll start with the empty box. Do you like fresh vegetable juice? Why would you think that? There's a juicer in your sink that hasn't been washed yet. And do I smell the faint fragrance of baked beans? You didn't use much salt, did you? What are you implying? You just told me that you find impending death to be intriguing. That confused me. When I look around your room, all I can see are the many ways in which you're resisting death. Poly MVA treatment, highly concentrated vitamin C IVs, fresh vegetable juice, vegetable protein without salt, gallons of vitamin D milk for fat and calcium. The ambivalence, yes. What? Two contradictory emotions mixing, coexisting together. An adult, mature mind is never satisfied with only one response. It's common sense. Isn't that right, my fairy? <laughs> I mean, he's got a point. A stinking indulgence. And a massive DVD collection. Why does that matter? You must live a very comfortable life. Well, then again, in the first game, he referenced like almost like 40 different movies throughout the game. What a cenophile. We're retired, remember? Retired in your 40s. I'm envious. But who doesn't love movies, Belle? I'm not a fan. Uh-oh. Oh, that won't do. You should dedicate all the free time you have to watching movies. It's practically an unwritten law. Films guide us. Films are filled with every important life lesson there is. Is that so? For example, They Live, 1988, directed by John Carpenter. That film taught us a valuable lesson. Always put on your sunglasses before a fight. Wait, that's irrelevant. You know? You got a point. Wait, he does? Movies teach us about everything we need to know. He said control the conversation. I learned about the right way to eat frozen pizza <laughs> from Cobra. It's one of Stallone's best films. <laughs> Dang it, Simon. Before that, I wouldn't be caught dead trying to eat frozen pizza. I thought it wasn't fit for human consumption. It really isn't. But that film changed my life I don't remember this beginning it's great to re-see it Simon that has nothing to do with the film you're just talking about pizza <laughs> all right so mr. Morgan I found several spots in this room that look strangely clean. Did you tidy up a bit because you knew we were coming? Those are... sanctuaries. Quote unquote. They've existed from the start. Sanctuaries. That's right. Sacred places. 
I see. I didn't even notice the one on the mantle. Hovels for pure souls, if you will. Were there originally objects in those hovels? Something you didn't want us to see? The souls still there. We haven't touched a thing. But we know you can't see anything. Hey, Simon, don't touch the sanctuary. Yes, Simon. Uh, s sorry. <coughs> That's a sanctuary. Don't ever touch it again. You've been watching us for four and a half years, and you couldn't even figure that much out. Good point. Come on, Simon. Uh, my bad. Dang it, Simon. It's my first time actually coming inside, you know. <laughs> You're earning far more than you deserve, then. <laughs> what were you doing all day in that black suburban? We thought wiretapping was your specialty. Don't tell me. Crossword puzzles. What do you think, my fairy? <laughs> Four and a half years. All that time. And what does he have to show for it? Crossword puzzles? No way. Sudoku. Come on. I thought you knew. I'm a Sudoku guy. Yeah. Agent Jones. Oh, right. He's completely taken control of the conversation. The one thing you didn't want to happen. At this rate, we'll never get anywhere. I need to press him some more. Agent Jones, did you find the files? Greenville, there he is. Francis C. Morgan, yeah? Mr. Morgan. Do you recognize these files? Whoa! Whoa! Ow! We told you. That's a sanctuary. <clears throat> Let him go! Assaulting an FBI agent is an obstruction of you. justice! We told you! Go! No! Stay back! Stay back! Sanctuary! Die! <laughs> Mr. Morgan? I cut my finger with that can opener this morning. I thought I stopped the bleeding, but it seeped through. Uh-oh. How could I be so stupid? How's the finger? Everything should be fine now. I'm sorry for being so careless. I made sure to read through your file and learn about your condition. The color red. Such an unusual thing to fear. Please, accept my deepest apologies. <clears throat> I, I'm sorry too, Morgan. How dare you file his sanctuary? Come on, Simon. I don't know what I was thinking. Dang it, Simon. I'll never touch one of your sanctuaries ever again. And no more red, either. <laughs> <sighs> don't ever. Does he watch movies in black and white? He kind of has to. Touch one. Again. I, I told them not to. Now, may we return to our discussion? Oh, don't worry. I won't let them touch you again. Mm. Strangely enough, this man has a fear of the color red. And I believe that fear is connected to the Greenville case. That's true. Could you tell me what exactly the word sanctuary means to you? Sanctuaries are sanctuaries. Thank you. Thank you, that was amazing. Nothing more and nothing less. That doesn't explain anything. <laughs> Why do you wish to know? Just curious. Bell. 
You're a much ruder person than you initially seem to be. Don't you agree, my fairy? What do our sanctuaries have to do with the investigation? If you're out of questions, then how about just going home? Hey, mind if I jump in here? No, Simon. What is it, Simon? We hope you've got a real question for us. Well, actually, I'm also a little curious myself. No one's supposed to touch any sanctuary, right? That's what we said. What about you, though? You can't even touch them yourself? Are there any extenuating circumstances? What are you getting at? I mean, I doubt if any of this really matters, but... If no one can touch the sanctuaries, then... How do you clean them? Good question, actually. Irrelevant, but good question. Are we not answering that question? This is a very large shredder. Is there something you don't want people finding out about? Hmm. Good question. But we never know when some curious civil servants may come and sift through our trash now, do we? You're already retired. What are you so worried about? <laughs> Simon! It's just a simple habit. From back when we were still on duty. Didn't they bang that into your head when you were up in Quantico? Some habits are hard to break, no matter how hard you try. True story. Alright, Greenville. Mr. Morgan, I'd like to ask you some questions about this case now. We don't want to remember that town. Uh... I want to, I'm though. sorry, but there's no way around this. I remember hearing about this case on the news when I was still a student. A high school girl named Anna Graham was murdered and the FBI stepped in to take over the case. I also remember it becoming a sprawled investigation due to evidence found in the victim's throat. Is that correct? After that case, you went on sick leave for two years. Dang, that's a good amount of sick leave. And when you returned, you requested to be switched over to desk work. What happened? That's a private matter. None of your business, Bill. Were you traumatized? Hmm. It's a common problem with prolific agents such as yourself. But there's another possibility that may make more sense. Perhaps. I wouldn't go there. You simply finished making preparations. Huh? What are you getting at? Too much about something will always turn it into a problem. The Greenvale case. Don't you think it resembles the Luke Carre case? Read the report. We have nothing else to say. I just need one more push. One more thing that can summon up the past. The silver clock in that trash pile. Is that an H5? That's right. John Harrison's fifth chronometer. Completed in 1770. After many years, he completed it and presented it to the Board of Longitude in order to end their feud with him. That's only a replica, of course. You like clocks? Clocks are amazing. Prime fruit of the human race's intellect. We took the invisible idea of time and manifested it in these. Yeah, I love clocks too. Absolutely fascinating. Shut up, Simon. You're out of your element. I disagree. What? Oh? Why? Time is valuable precisely because it can't be seen. Yet nowadays people can't tell what time it is unless it's measured in numbers. Talk about idiocy. I don't mean to side with the Board of Longitude, but remember, humans used to cross oceans with the stars alone. We have our eyes to read moon charts and study the sky. We don't need clocks. Clocks help, though. What if it's cloudy or storming? All you need is courage and a love for adventure. It's the dumbest thing she said. <laughs> 
Hear that, my fairy? Courage and a love for adventure? <laughs> Come on, Belle. Surely you know how many lives have been claimed by your pals, courage and adventure. <sighs> hey, hold on a second here. That board of longitude thing, what the heck is that? I mean, I've heard of it before. I'm an FBI analyst, remember? You're not a good one. I just sort of can't remember it right now. I know what it is, really. No, you don't. I'm telling the truth. Come on, Aaliyah, back me up here. Aaliyah? Just ignore him. Yes! Yes! That's royal jelly. Huh? You were staring at the jar, weren't you? Do you find it strange that there's honeycomb inside? We wanted to harvest royal jelly in its most natural state. The queen's main food source, created from the worker bee's secretions. It's a perfect food, filled with power. Meant to fuel the birth of the next queen. By absorbing it into our own bodies, we too can acquire that power. Sounds a fancy stem cell. Incidentally, did you know that all the worker bees are female? No. Guess they didn't teach you that at Quantico. Male bees are only born to inseminate, and they're born from unfertilized eggs to boot. They have short lives and don't even get stingers. Sort of feels like a glimpse into the future of our society, wouldn't you agree? What? Women are gifted with the power to conceive, give birth, and nourish their children. But men... Men are consumed with the job of providing women with the chance to do so. If women no longer had to rely on men for the seeds of life, they would soon cease to desire them, we believe. Okay, I would actually agree with that. Be careful, Simon. Huh? Of what? Your bell's already stolen the reins from you. <laughs> hmm. All right, picture the documents. Mr. Morgan, please look at this. Uh-oh. What did we just say? We don't want to remember Greenvale. This isn't a photo from Greenvale. Look closely at it. Former Special Agent Francis Zack Morgan. Oh, we're bringing the tree involved. This photograph predates Greenvale. It's from the Lucare case you worked on in 2005. Red. Red tree. Red tree. Yes. A red tree. Greenvale wasn't the first place you saw one of these. The Greenvale case and the Lee Clarkson murder case. They're connected by these red trees, aren't they? Red trees. Answer me. What are these trees? Red trees. I want the truth. Tell me everything you know. <laughs> the red trees. You really did your homework. Well done, Belle. Uh-oh. You're good. Damn good. Mm. Are you ready to talk now? I want to know what went down in Lucare in 2005. <sighs> Fine. We'll tell you. We'll tell you what happened in that town. Yes. It was that red tree. That red tree ruined my life. It was... <sighs> it was a sultry summer day. The sun comes down hard on you in the south. Still does. Like a torrential downpour of demonic whispers. What? It all started back in that sweltering summer. Just like all summers nowadays. We still had our best friend with us back then. Mm. The other me. 
<laughs> My better half. <laughs>